Hello, my little rain clouds. I was doing a little bit of coloring in. Uh, I was trying out a new way of coloring with some pastels, uh, which I'd never really heard of before and had never used, but uh, I just found them in my brother's stuff. Uh, he was asking me to go through some stuff. And I gave them a try, and they were really hard to use, and I had no idea what I was doing. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to try the same picture again, but I'm just going to use regular pencils because... Uh, I feel more comfortable with that. So uh, let's let's just color in this nice happy scene. Uh, it is from the Happy Campers Coloring Book. Uh, it is a freely available page on artisfun.com um, by Thania McArdle. And you can color it in too if you'd like, but you don't have to. You can do whatever you want. Uh, whether you want to color in or just do some other stuff, that's fine. I am gonna, let's go in this little fox down the bottom. It's very cute. So there's like a camper van and like some trees and a sun and a rainbow and some clouds and uh, mushrooms and stuff. And there's a little fox down the bottom as well. So I'm gonna use some orange and just color in this little fox friend, uh, which reminds me of a friend of mine. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I've been, I'm feeling kind of burnt out lately. Um, feeling like my soul is tired and my body and my mind. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Obviously, everybody's having a hard time. Um, naturally, I want to step into the helper role and help people with that. And I, ha I have been. Um, I've been helping people a lot, but probably a bit too much and not really taking good care of myself. Um, I haven't really been able to do many of the things that I usually do to take care of myself and, and kind of refill my cup, uh, unfortunately, and uh, so I've kind of suffered as a result of that. And, um, you know, a, a lot of people are experiencing the same sorts of things, I imagine, even if they're not in, in helper roles, um, just having their routines disrupted and stuff not available anymore uh, is hard. And there's a lot of panic and anxiety and stuff that people are going through um, that is pretty tough for a lot of people, you know? Um, I think I'm, I'm handling most of it pretty well, but I'm just not really, unfortunately, doing uh, the right kind of things to take care of myself and... Um, been feeling a lot of avoidance around, um, avoidance and procrastination around, um, my uni work, my assignments and stuff. I haven't really wanted to tackle those. Uh, did a little bit of work on, on one, but still not much. Um, and it's, it's tricky. Uh, fortunately my, my uni has given everyone, uh, like just one week extra on, on their assignment, which is nice. Um, but even, even if I get that and like maybe some other extensions, it's still just like, I don't really want to do anything about that. Uh, and it's, it's tough, you know, cause it's like, if you're, if you're like a doctor or like a, like a med student, I guess, um, in like the 18, what was it? 1810, 1800s, uh, they're, they're like Spanish flu. 1812, I think it was. Um, if you're, if you're like a medical student studying to become a doctor, are you going to like keep studying or, or are you going to like actually go and help people <laughs> right now? Um, cause you know, like I'm, I'm pretty much finished my course already and I can help people right now. So I don't really want to be like, oh, this is an assignment about how I feel about this. And this is how this counseling modality could be used in this way. And it's like, it doesn't really feel important at the moment. It, you know, everything kind of falls away. And I just want to be like pitching in and helping people right away. Um, I could be, a, you know, boots on the ground, comforting people, providing help, providing resources and stuff, giving people comfort, um, yeah, comfort and company and, and safety and, um, mental health resources and, and all those kinds of things, you know? So I'm just, 
just kind of getting stuck into it, doing that, putting my, my effort and my energy and my spoons into, into doing that stuff. So at the end of the day, <laughs> I don't really have the energy uh, to, to be like, okay, now it's time for my assignment, you know? And I imagine that there's probably quite a few people in that sort of situation, whether they're like professional helpers or not, they probably just want to take care of people and do, do helpery kind of stuff. Um, so it's, it's difficult. Uh, it's difficult to try and balance that and to look after my own needs as well. Um, which is not so much a, I'm not important, but more just a, I don't really have like the the same kind of avenues, I guess, to uh, do self care um, that I used to, and it's an adjustment to try and find new ways of doing that. Um, and this is something that predates the the, the COVID crisis. Um, this was, you know, a bunch of stuff just sort of not really being uh, open to me anymore and uh, various sort of changes in what's going on uh, in life, different people's um, lifestyles changing. And again, you know, a lot of people are going through that, but just not having the same support set, uh, networks and, and the same sort of activities and places you can go and things like that is, is tough. Um, and I think not not being able to study on campus anymore is tough as well because I was finding that was really helping with my motivation uh, and uh, now I can't do that <laughs> we're all all studying from uh, from home so it's 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 tricky it's tough but we'll get through it we'll, we'll find ways to adjust and, and ways to be new ways to be um yeah so I thought just talking a bit about self-care and um, and things like that might be nice while I'm just coloring in. I'm just doing some some plants now, using a nice little little shade of green. Um, yeah, I think I think self care is really important to talk about, and a, a lot of people will use the term self care, and they'll kind of throw it around like a bit of a buzzword or like a like a magic phrase that you can do to just solve a problem. Like, oh, just do some self care and you'll be fine. But they don't necessarily know what self-care is or what it looks like for them or what it looks like for other people. Um, and that's a really important thing to kind of come to terms with is, you know, what does self-care actually look like for you? Because we are all different and we all find different things helpful. We have different needs. I mean, yes, new, you know, humans have the same sort of universal needs, but everybody has, um, different forms of needs that they may have emotionally speaking and and that sort of thing um you know introverts and extroverts and ambiverts differ um some people are more spiritual some people are more social some people have uh, intellectual or existential things that they might need to look at some people will have um different kinds of emotional needs some some are more you know nervous and anxious some might need escapism more some people need to talk through stuff some people want to do things and be active and be busy um so i think it's it's important to sort of explore what self-care looks like for you and what it is that actually helps you because we can we can look at lists of of things of examples of self-care and all that but just because someone, some like health guru said it or something, or you read it on an article, doesn't mean that it's going to be right for you. Um, so having, having strategies and, and a bit of a, like a toolbox uh, that you can use to really take care of yourself and not just do something that someone's told you is good. Um, that's important because what works for them may not work for you and it may actually have the opposite effect where it stresses you out or it, it you know exhausts you or makes you feel uh, worse so don't um don't just take whatever anyone says there's um there's a nice website called you feel like shit uh i think is what the address is let me just check that uh it's um it's kind of like an, like an interactive quiz, I guess. Yeah. You feel like shit.com. 
um, it's it's a little kind of game of sorts to help look at what you're experiencing, what kind of things you're feeling and needing, and what's going to help you with that. And there's a few other other um, websites like that too. There's some like interactive self care checklists and and things like, you know, have you have you eaten enough? Have you have you had some water? Have you had some friend time? Have you been taking breaks from from work and things like that? Um, just kind of helping you figure out, well, what is it that I'm feeling? What is it that I'm needing? Um, so that that's, I think, a, a good, helpful thing. But um, yeah, just just having having some sort of sounding board to help you explore what you're going through and what you need is um, is important, I think. And there's a bunch of ways you can do that. There's a bunch of guides and stuff. Um, but just having a space that you can kind of reflect on it and explore what you're feeling, what you're needing is, is good. Um, and, you know, friends can help you with that, but friends aren't always around when, when you need that kind of care or you may not feel up to uh, speaking to them or exploring that with them. You know, it, it, it's a, a level of uh, vulnerability that may be uncomfortable uh, for some people, and that's okay. Uh, I think that we tend to overlook self-care until we can get to a point where it's like, oh, I'm really struggling now. Like I'm super burnt out and having a hard time. So um, getting getting to a, a point where we can kind of look after ourselves sustainably and not run into horrible burnout territory <laughs> And, and be able to sort of keep things sustainable for a while. Um, that's really good. That's really important and, and healthy to do. Uh, so I would, I would encourage you to try and do that, to take sort of more um, sort of precautionary steps, if you like. Um, ha- having a plan and uh, even a routine, if possible, is really great. But just... Um, taking the time to kind of check in with yourself and realizing where you're at and what you need and how you're feeling and, and how, you know, close to burnout you might be, um, is, is good. And, you know, you don't, burnout's not the only possibility of course, but I think for a lot of people, um, if you neglect your self care and you keep, uh, expending resources that you may not really have, then you probably will reach a point where you, where you do sort of get into, into burnout territory and, um, and you may not realize it for a while. Like I'm pretty self-aware now, uh, having experienced burnout, uh, already, uh, in a, in a bad way before I'm, I'm more experienced with it and I'm more mindful of it, but I'm still not that great at actually doing something about it. Um, and, and part of that is I'm, I'm still learning what self-care looks like for me and, and what kind of things I'm able to, uh, actually use as self-care because not, not all of the self-care that I need is the self-care that I have, (laughs) uh, that's, that's accessible to me uh, all the time. Unfortunately, sometimes we need, um, we need certain other people or we need activities or places or things that we don't have, uh, when, when we need it. And that is tricky. That's tough. Um, so being able to have a diverse toolkit, being able to have lots of different things that can help you is very important, uh, if, if possible. And, it's, um, it's a matter of exploring. It's a matter of saying, you know, you can, you can read books and guides and websites and watch videos on self-care and, and learn more about what is out there and what the, um, the various options are, but it's not necessarily going to be right for you. And that's okay. Um, having, you know, having lots of different things is good, but, um, ultimately, what works for you is what works for you and not stuff that other people say. Um, just because it works for someone else, it doesn't necessarily work for you. So look into what does work for you and you can try the stuff that they recommend, but it may not be the right thing and that's okay. Um, typically things like 
making sure that you've eaten enough, making sure that you've you've had um, you know plenty of water is good. And when I say eaten enough, I don't just mean enough quantity of food, but are you getting the right sort of nutrients? Are you getting the things that your body actually needs, not just eating uh, junk food and and stuff? You know, even though junk food can be um, self care in moderation, but um, having you know proteins and um, like vegetables and stuff, <laughs> you know, uh, getting enough sleep is important and having good quality sleep is important. A lot of people I think suffer from poor sleep hygiene and, and don't get good sleep quality. Um, but also not overdoing it with sleep because I think we can use sleep as a way to try and avoid stuff. And that doesn't necessarily work super great for us. I think if you're, if you're sleeping to try and avoid like stuff that you know is there, then it's probably not going to work for you because, um, you're not going to feel rested because you're stressed. And so you'll probably just feel worse afterwards. Um, and the same with procrastination about stuff. Like I find video games to be a nice escape but I also use them as procrastination and the line between that can be blurry sometimes. So I can, I can sometimes get sort of rest and, and recover by using video games. But then there are also times where I am quite clearly procrastinating and not wanting to acknowledge or address certain things, not wanting to do my work, not wanting to, um, look into things, not wanting to face certain, problems or feelings or, or whatever. Um, and when that happens, I don't really get the value from playing games. I don't really feel rested or better because once I stop this, the bad stuff is still there. The stuff that I'm wanting to avoid is still there. The problems, the, the unpleasant emotions, the whatever, uh, it's still there. So, um, that doesn't work super well. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes it can work and it can be good self-care, but sometimes it doesn't. Um, and it's tough to know the difference or, or rather it's tough to acknowledge the difference. I'm probably aware of it on some level, but I don't really want to acknowledge it. So, um, yeah, it, it can, it can be tough. Certainly. Uh, I think having the, um, having the ability to talk to friends is important, but sometimes you may not want to, or you may not feel up to it and that's okay. Um, and, and some people in your life may be good support networks and may help comfort you and center you and, and take your mind off things. And some people may not, and that's okay. Like it's okay to have people in your life who you may love and you may want to spend time with sometimes, but not, necessarily find them so helpful in a crisis like that. And so just giving yourself th the permission to go, you know what? I don't think this person's really going to be helping me right now. So I'm going to not spend so much time with them or talk with them, or I'm going to set boundaries with them so that they don't overwhelm me and make things worse. And that's okay to do. Um, it's, it's okay to take some time and step back from people and it doesn't mean that, that you hate them. It doesn't mean that they're bad, but it's just like, okay, this isn't what I need right now. And this is probably going to uh, take from my resources because I'm in a bad headspace or I'm, I'm struggling. So I, I need to give myself the, the permission and the space to not engage with them um, and, and, you know, to withdraw from people if I need it. Um, there is a difference between withdrawing for, you know, healthy reasons and withdrawing because you're afraid of rejection or whatever though. Um, so it's important to be mindful of that. If you, if you're worrying that you're a burden on people and that they're going to reject you and make you feel bad and all that kind of stuff, that tends not, not to be great. Um, there's a difference between solitude and isolation and, uh, it's an important difference to be aware of right now. Um, as many of us are in isolation, unfortunately. Um, but just because we are physically isolated does not mean that we have to be emotionally isolated. And it's, it's important to try and give ourselves, um, a connection with, with people who make us feel good and, and who do help us to take care of ourselves. Um, 
so having having the ability to uh, to spend time with those that f fill you up and make you feel good uh, is important. And the people who don't, it's okay to take a step back from. Even if you want them in your life, even if you don't want to cut them out, that's fine. Um, but just just taking a step back is is good. Uh, I'm making a nice rainbow now. I don't really have like the indigos that I that I want. I'm, I'm using some like purple, but I don't think that purple is really what I want here. But it's fine. It's fine. We'll just we'll figure it out. We'll do what we can. Um, yeah. So having having that um, space for yourself is good. Having the ability to um, have a support network that actually does help you, rather than you know constantly giving and not getting it's 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 important to have a mixture um and there's also uh with activities and things there are um active and passive forms of media there are things where you're doing stuff and there are things where you are um just kind of observing and watching right so like books and movies and music and and shows and things um they can be helpful, but if you're kind of saturating yourself with them and not having enough active things to do, um, you know, games uh, are, are a great form of that, and um, certain kinds of reading that you sort of internalize, uh, I suppose, um, potentially as well. There's this whole like media theory stuff that you can look into, but but just having um, active things that you're doing with your day is important too. Um, and something that I suppose many people are probably lacking now, which is unfortunate. So having, um, having stuff that, that, that does actually make you, uh, feel engaged and switches on your brain, doing little like puzzles and stuff can be really helpful. Um, having the, uh, the sort of interactive experiences potentially with other people sharing, uh, media with them as well. Thinking about stuff, um, talking about stuff is really great. So trying to strike a balance between uh, the kinds of media and, and entertainment um, that you that you consume is important too. And um, you know, having having escapism is good, but obviously too much of it is not super great because um, you can lose touch with reality and also you don't tend to feel like a sense of accomplishment or pride or anything it's just kind of checking out and checking out from yourself as well um, so i would say that those things are not necessarily so helpful um, giving yourself the the opportunity to to be in the world and be part of the world as well as being able to take a step back from it is good is is important um, and yeah, just not overindulging one thing, basically, uh, which I'm, I'm guilty of certainly having, having diversity, uh, and, and variety in your life is a, is a great thing. It's a healthy thing. Um, I, I would recommend trying to get some exercise if you can. It can certainly be tough, particularly in the current climate. Um, but doing what you can Go, getting outside in general is good as well not all exercise needs to be outside not all exercise uh, is going to look the same for everybody and that's okay but getting the endorphins running through the brain is good getting some sunlight every day is good uh, obviously we have you know protection and stuff if need be um, but just having a little bit of outside time tends to be good. And I haven't really been getting this, unfortunately, but I want to try and do that more. Um, it's, it's good for the brain. It's, it's good for the body. And uh, it's something that we need. So, yeah, just, you know, I've, I've, I've seen it written. We're basically houseplants with more complex emotions. <laughs> Uh, and it's 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 true like we are we're, we're living beings we're organisms still so we need um we need that that general level of care that is quite universal to to organisms you know we need we need sunlight we need food we need water we need sleep we need um we need things that rest us 
biologically, mentally, physically, spiritually, all of that sort of stuff. It's, it's important. Um, and so, you know, if, if, if your friend were living like you were living, would you be happy or would you be like, you really, you like, you, you, I, I want you to do this. I want you to get these things. I, I, I want you to, you know, give yourself the, the, um, the nutrients that you need. And, and I want you to try and get out a bit more. I want you to get exercise. I want you to do these things because I care about you. I care about your well-being. So ask yourself that. If, if someone I, I really loved and cared about were living this way, would I be happy with that? Or would I gently want them to make some changes? And I think that's important to recognize. Uh, <laughs> and I think a lot of us probably don't want to answer that question. I, I've, I've been in that position, certainly. Um, yeah, it's 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 tricky to acknowledge that yeah, maybe things aren't so great, and that maybe I've been slacking on taking care of myself. You know, we don't like that. We don't like acknowledging that, but it's important to do. Um, okay, I'm making a really nice rainbow. I'm actually pretty happy with this rainbow. Um, it's quite nice. Is there anything else I want to add to the rainbow? Do we need like a bit more pink? Maybe. Mm, maybe this one. Okay, it's pretty. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've have been neglecting certain aspects of self care, certainly. Um, but yeah, I think uh, you know if if you're the kind of person that needs to have certain sorts of activities, um, socializing, those kinds of things, some people want reflective time. Some people want time to be by themselves, to do things by themselves. Some people want time to be able to focus, time to be able to create, um, and whatever that looks like to you. You know, you, you might want to make little like models and, and stuff, metal model airplanes or, you know, paint little, uh, like Warhammer figurines or something. You might, you might like drawing or coloring in, you might like singing or writing or whatever it is. Um, Maybe you restore cars or something. Maybe you like uh, building things out of wood. Who knows? Maybe you enjoy playing little games on your phone. Maybe you like uh, watching a reality show and gossiping about it with your friend. Whatever it is that works for you, that helps to fill your cup, that makes you feel whole and fulfilled, um, that's really important. I think uh, a lot of us are probably going to be missing intimacy uh, and social connection and things like that. And missing intimacy is tough. Um, I, I would say that one of the key sort of factors of my audios, of the thing that, that uh, is popular and desirable about them, that, that really attracts people to them, um, especially in the first place, is a desire for intimacy. And my audios provide a safe, comfortable, convenient way of experiencing intimacy in a simulated kind of way. Um, for a lot of people who aren't able to have that or aren't sort of willing to put themselves out there because they're, you know, scared or afraid or insecure or, or what have you. Um, so like my audios do give that to it to a degree, but obviously it's not the same as real, you know, interpersonal intimacy where you are giving and receiving it. Um, and that's something that I think a lot of people struggle with in general, but I think particularly with the isolation and social distancing, it's going to be an even bigger thing that people really crave that kind of intimacy. And so it's there for you. If, if you want that in, for my audios, you can have that sense of intimacy. Um, but ultimately you're probably going to want it for, for realsies. 
and that's understandable and okay and healthy and it's good to listen to that and acknowledge that but also not to overindulge in that or to pursue it in uh, unhealthy ways i think a lot of people look for intimacy but don't know how to fill that that need and so you see a lot of people who are engaging in um like a lot of casual sex or people who are looking at a lot of pornography or things like that and you know those kinds of things are okay in moderation if they're if they're safe and they're things that you actually want to do but they're not necessarily the best way to experience intimacy and i think that for a lot of people they end up feeling worse after that because they're not really experiencing the intimacy that they crave they're, they're, they're looking for sex or sexual release when what they actually need is a, a genuine interpersonal connection with someone um what is intimacy it, it varies depending on who you talk to i suppose but you know i i would i would say that intimacy is a human connection um not necessarily human i suppose you could have some intimacy with animals but it's it's typically a connection with another human being um one that involves shared vulnerability and um where you are able to kind of open up to each other and accept each other um my audios provide some aspects of that but obviously are quite different because they're very one-sided um and they're not live <laughs> you know you're not you're not having an actual experience with someone it is a simulated experience and it can be great and really comforting and give you some aspects of what you need but it's not quite the same intimacy tends to involve making ourselves naked uh, not necessarily physically naked, although that can certainly be a part of it, but sort of emotionally naked, opening up to people and sharing, this is who I am, this is, you know, this is something that's important to me, this is something that I feel, this is what I care about, um, this is what I worry about, etc. Uh, you know, here's, here's something that's important or significant or a part of me that I don't share with just anybody, but I'm sharing it with you. And then hopefully the other person accepts you for that and says i see who you are i see you as you are i see you naked emotionally or otherwise and i like what i see i accept you you know and and that's really healing and validating and lovely and and we need that um it's it's something that is sadly missing from many people's lives um, because it involves vulnerability and vulnerability is scary it, it has the risk of us getting hurt so we don't, we don't really want that, but we also do want it and we need it. Um, so that's a, that's a tricky thing. Um, and so I think a lot of people who aren't necessarily ready or willing to engage in, in that kind of vulnerability find the intimacy in my audios very healing and helpful. Um, but, you know, obviously it doesn't scratch that itch in quite the same way. And that's understandable. And you know, even even if I could give you the full experience of intimacy, I, I kind of think that I shouldn't because I don't want to like supersede, I guess, um, the 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 very natural and important human connection, and and I don't want to remove the uh, the desire or need for people to connect with someone. Um, I, I I want people to find it a stepping stone to being able to have the real thing and to be able to, to, to forge a meaningful connection with someone. Um, cause I think that that's really important. So yeah. Um, basically we, we need people and, um, you know, even if we can't be with them physically as, as much anymore, we still want to be involved with people. Um, and we need to find new ways of being with people and new ways of connecting with people. And I think that we're probably going to experience more em emotional and psychological and spiritual intimacy with people now because we as a society need to move away from physical intimacy um, for the most part. So having more conversations with people, talking with people, getting to know people and sharing fears and desires and hopes and things of that nature i think that's going to be really important and um 
hopefully something that we engage in more and probably over the internet. So I think that finding connections and becoming part of um, communities and forming more relationships and deeper relationships with people uh, is going to be important to us. And I, I think that's going to be something to, um, to try and work on and having those people uh, in our lives so that we can get that kind of intimacy that we need. Um, a lot of people associate intimacy with romance and sex and things like that. And certainly you can, you can get intimacy from a romantic or sexual partner, um, but it definitely doesn't have to be. And indeed I would say that, um, men in particular are encouraged to only get intimacy from their partners, uh, which is very unhealthy and, uh, it leads to a lot of toxic masculinity and misogyny and all sorts of problems. But, um, yeah, basically like we need to, to learn to connect with all sorts of people and you can have intimacy with friends and family members and, you know, therapists and spiritual leaders and all sorts of people. Um, just, just opening up and, and making a meaningful connection and expressing vulnerability and having that vulnerability be accepted and valued and hopefully reciprocated, um, is, is so crucial. It's, it's something that is so fundamental to the human existence, the human condition, and we all need that. And people often don't know how to find that or, or fulfill that need. But I think that if you're listening to me, you're probably a step above or a step ahead of, of many people in that regard, because you are kind of looking for things that, that do give you that sense of intimacy. Um, but yeah, I think with the, with the social distancing and the disconnection that many people are facing, that, that kind of intimacy is going to be much more potent and much more needed and hopefully something that, um, we as a society will sort of focus on more now is, is embracing the idea that, that there are a lot of people out there who need, um, that kind of intimacy and are missing that kind of intimacy. So yeah, basically just, just be mindful of the interpersonal needs that you will have, you know, the, the need to laugh with people, the need to share with people, the need to, to, um, to hear what they're experiencing, the need to share what you are experiencing, the need to explore, um, the, the need to bond and have those kinds of shared experiences. It's so crucial. And, um, we will need to find new ways of being and new ways of experiencing them. And fortunately the internet has come a long way. <laughs> um, and, and I think that that will be a big part of how we experience those, those things now. Um, having, having communities, having chat rooms, having, you know, Netflix parties and things, having, um, D and D games, having the ability to, to, you know, worship, uh, via the internet. A lot of churches are like live streaming their, their, um, sermons and stuff now. And, um, people are getting together in little groups and communities, whatever the function is, whatever the aim is, we're seeing a lot of new kinds of connections, um, emerge. I mean, obviously these, these sorts of things have been happening for a long time, but people embracing them, uh, in ways that, that they haven't been. Um, and it's quite lovely. <laughs> it's, it's nice to see that. So I think, yeah, just, um, being, being mindful, uh, of the things that you need and the ways that you get those things and that they're probably changing the, the ways that you, that you used to fill those needs may not be available to you anymore. So having, um, flexibility about that, having an open mind and thinking about how can I get my needs filled now in this, in this climate, in this changing situation. Um, and it may be very different and that's okay. You know, different is not necessarily bad. It's not necessarily that, oh, this is a, this is a poor substitute. Things are worse now. Um, it, it's not, it's not hitting me in the old way or, or whatever. 
it just, it's a different experience. And I think if you go into it, not trying to compare it to the old way and just going, okay, I'm going to try something new. It's going to be different. It might be um, better in some ways and it might be worse than others. And that's okay. But yeah, I think having, um, having the courage and the open mind to be able to embrace new things is important. And it's tough to embrace that, but important to do. And I think that um, the people who are going to come out the other side healthy and whole and, and better off uh, because of it will be the ones who are able to be flexible and who are able to embrace new ways of being and new ways of thinking about things and new lifestyles and habits and behaviors and stuff that, that are uh, not so um, rigid and stagnant and trying to cling to old ways that aren't feasible anymore um, necessarily because there are going to be a lot of changes and some of those will be changes for the better and some of them will not be and that's okay but learning to embrace those things I think is very important um, I've been doing some good work I'm coloring in some mushrooms at the moment what else do we need what do we want um, hmm. I've got kind of a stripy mushroom. Do we want like a purple for that, maybe? Um, <laughs> what do we have? What about this one? How's this look? Uh, it's kind of pinkish. Not, not as into that one. What about this? Mm, yeah, it's kind of nice. Um, yeah, I think um, I think we're going to see a lot of social social change and changes in um, business and politics and government. I, I hope at least that we will, and we'll see a lot of difference in power distribution and social services and money and budgets and things. And I think this is. Um, it's bringing a lot of uh, people's bullshit <laughs> out into the light. And we're kind of challenging it and calling it and going like, well, you said that we couldn't work from home, but actually we could. Or you said that we couldn't really do these kinds of healthcare things, but actually we can. Uh, so I think that that's really, hopefully at least, going to be a positive thing. Um, we, will, we will see, hopefully, some shifts in society. Um, and I think that, Yes, there are some bad elements of humanity that are coming out in this time. There's a lot of panic. There's some, uh, there's some racism. There's, you know, selfishness and impulse buying and things like that. But I think also we're, we're seeing some really lovely forms of connection with people. We're seeing people kind of coming together. We're seeing, um, a, a lot of society kind of being leveled. Um, because everybody's experiencing things quite similarly. Or yes, you know, wealthy people are probably better off and able to handle things more comfortably, but I think a lot of people are experiencing kind of the same things. So having, having a kind of universal aspect to the experience is, is quite good, I think. Um, there's, there's, there's positives from it, at least. Even if there are negatives too, um, yeah. And uh, having having the uh, the kind of social awareness that a lot of the younger generation does, I think there's a lot more solidarity and a lot of supportiveness that is really lovely to see. Um, there's a lot of people just sort of reaching out and sending love and positivity and wanting to help people and it's it's lovely to see you know i think i think a lot of people are stepping up and wanting to be their best selves wanting to take care of each other wanting to make social change um i i'm stepping up like i'm i'm recording a lot more and i'm doing things that i ordinarily wouldn't do and i'm yeah i'm just i'm I'm trying to embrace it and use the opportunity for positive things um, where possible. And I think that that's quite lovely, really. 
Um, so there's there's always going to be negatives in in these kinds of things, and and yes, there there are negatives, and they're pretty apparent. But it's also it's nice to to be able to find some of the positives too, um, and to use this as an opportunity for growth. And I think that a lot of us will find some really lovely things that come out of being forced to change. Like obviously, it's not fun. Um, it's scary and unpleasant and there's a lot of uncertainty, but there's also just a lot of like change that's coming. And typically we don't like change, particularly when it's forced upon us, but change also tends to bring good things as well. So there's, there's nice aspects of it, definitely. Uh, and, and nice things that will be coming as well. Yeah. Um, Cut it in some mushrooms. Some of them are pretty funky. I actually quite like that. <laughs> uh, sort of magic, magical, magical stuff. But um, yeah, I'm just coloring in like a nice tree at the moment. I think it's like a pine tree or a fir tree or something. I don't know. It looks a bit Christmassy. Um, I'm using a dark green for that. But I, I think, um, yeah, just really trying to be more mindful of what you need and. Um, I'm talking to myself when I say that as well, <laughs> trying to, uh, to listen to yourself and uh, give yourself a bit of breathing room. And I think that I haven't really been doing that. Like I've been procrastinating on my work, but I haven't been taking a break from it. It's still like on my mind kind of. Um, so I need to really just try and step back and, and lift that weight off for a while. Um, and you may need to do similar with some of the things that you're putting on yourself. And, you know, it's okay to accept that you're having a hard time right now. And it's, that things are, are tricky and scary and up in the air. And there's a lot going on. There's a lot of change. There's a lot of loss. There's a lot of stuff that um, you used to be able to do that you can't do or that you have to do in different ways. There are, um, there are lots of very strong emotions that are going to come up. There's an awful lot of change and we just need to be accepting of that and that it's going to be hard for us, that it's going to come with some challenges and it's okay for us not to be at our best right now. It's okay for us to be struggling. Frankly, it would be concerning if we weren't, if we were just like, yep, I got this. This is great. This is the best time of my life. I'm, I'm handling this. No sweat. I'm not having to make a single change. <laughs> I'd be like, mm, that seems concerning. How were you living before? Um, so I, yeah, I think just just embracing the fact that it's going to be hard, and that's that's okay. It's it's meant to be hard. It's meant to be tough to adjust to something like this. If it weren't, that would be kind of weird. It would be it would probably be indicating a very unhealthy life pr prior to this. Um, and you know. If, if that is the case, then fine. That's, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not judging. Um, but it may indicate that there's some changes that do need to be made. Either way. Um, but yeah, I think just just trying to be compassionate. Trying to be understanding, as, as you hopefully can be for other people as well. If you, if you see people behaving in ways that aren't so great, just try and remember that stuff is really tough for a lot of people. And they don't really know what they're doing. And they don't really know what's going on. And they're trying to process grief, but they don't know that it's grief probably. Um, yeah, we're not, we're not at our best. And it's good to be forgiving about that, to realize that we're all just kind of scared animals and we're all just muddling on as best we can. Um, and that doesn't excuse you know, bad behavior, but just being mindful of it and uh, more accepting and compassionate about it, I find helpful. It, it, it helps to kind of diffuse uh, anger and frustration and stuff and um, bring about more, more helpful, more, more positive and um, practical sorts of feelings. Because the way that we're going to get through this is with love and kindness and cooperation um, and understanding. It's, it's not through anger. It's not through hate or fear. Um, that's not the Jedi way. But yeah, just, just having 
um, a compassion for others and compassion for yourself. Very important. And I try and practice that when possible. And I certainly encourage other people to practice that too. And I, I want you to be compassionate and understanding towards yourself. And I want you to take care of yourself. Even if you don't feel that it's important, um, even if there are you know, plenty of other stuff that you want to be doing or stuff that you think is more important right now, you need to put your own oxygen mask on first. And I haven't necessarily been doing that. Um, but if you don't put your own oxygen mask on, you're going to fall unconscious. And there's no guarantee that someone else is going to put yours on for you. So, you know, before you put on someone else's, put on your own. That way, you know that you're okay. You know that you've got this and that you can make it through and that you are sustainable and that anything that you do is just kind of icing on the cake at that point, right? As long as you're taking care of yourself, then even just a little bit of pitching in and helping for other people is going to be positive and, and um, is going to make things better. Whereas if you're pushing and pushing and pushing and burning yourself out, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be a good time. So um, just... Be, be mindful of that. And I think um, it's it's easy to, 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 to talk the talk, but walking the walk is another matter. And I'm definitely still working on that. Um, but I have been trying to take steps here and there. And um, it's a process of finding what works and, and finding what works in an, in a new changing world, in a, in a, a new kind of environment, a, a, you know, a life where stuff is different now. And it's okay to be struggling with that too. Um, just, just do your best to be aware of what's going on and listening to your body and your mind and what they're telling you you need, because they don't tend to be wrong about that stuff, uh, even if we don't like what they're telling us. <laughs> uh, if, if you're feeling a need for something, it's probably right. It's probably good to listen to. I, um, I've certainly found that out the hard way. And even now, I'm not listening as much as I probably should be, but I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to be more mindful of that, more aware of that. I've certainly noticed that today, which is part of why I'm doing this, because I, I find it nice, um, sort of self-care. It's nice and soothing. It's nice to unwind, to uh, unload some of the stuff on my mind. It's nice to just do some soothing, gentle, um, creative, relaxing kind of stuff like coloring in. Um, and so if you are in need of some self-care, coloring in might be good for you. Uh, maybe not if you've got perfectionistic tendencies and you struggle with that, but Maybe you can work on that by coloring in uh, little, little simple pictures that don't need to be perfect because that is what I'm doing. That's actually kind of nice. <laughs> um, okay, so I've done the tree. I don't really know what to do about the clouds because uh, I'm coloring most things in in a fairly realistic way. So I might need to color in the clouds differently. Or maybe I can make them like blue or something, who knows. Um, or I can just go like crazy abstract colors. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we've got like a flower and the caravan. Um, hmm. What's going to be a nice color for flowers? What haven't I used much of? Used a bit of yellow, used a bit of orange. Um, used some purples. Um, maybe I'm going to use a bit of yellow because there's like little lights maybe uh, on the caravan. There may not be lights, but I'm going to make them lights. Um, kind of looks like a, like a jet, a just as motley or something. Um, but maybe it's not. I'm just going to color them in yellow anyway, because that feels good to me. Could have, could have made them all different colors, but it's fine. I'm, I'm happy enough with yellow. And this yellow is not particularly great, so I might go back and do it with another yellow afterwards, and we'll just call that blending. Uh, what's good? Like this one? Sure. This is very blunt, actually. Maybe I'll use this one. This is also very blunt, but maybe it's better. Um, 
Yeah. And, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of, like, excuse me, I need some water. There's a lot of um, loneliness that people are probably going to be experiencing, which is understandable and normal and healthy. Um, if you haven't, I would highly suggest watching my Stardew Valley playthrough, because there is a lot of it. Um, and it's good company. It's it's just nice and relaxing and chill. Um, and you can just kind of switch off and just spend some time with someone, someone who's calm, who's relaxed, who's feeling good, and who will hopefully make you feel good too. It's, it's just nice to be in someone else's presence uh, sometimes. And particularly if that person doesn't want anything from you, they're not expecting you to answer or respond, they're not expecting you to do anything, you can just kind of be um, around someone, just sort of hang out. And I think that that's nice, and I think that that's helpful, and yeah, like, whatever it is that works for you. If you, if you want podcasts or um, watching, like, Friends or Law and Order or, or whatever... Um, some people just like having noise on in the background. They just want like people talking and they don't really care what they're talking about. Um, whether it's being on a break or double homicides or whatever. Um, but just having the, the feeling of like company is, is important for a lot of people, I think. Um, so having something on and, you know, why not your old pal Rainy? It's got a nice voice. It's comforting. Uh, it's soothing and gentle. Doesn't tend to talk about homicides very often. Um, and uh, you know, I, I would I would say that it's probably going to be a positive influence on you and your mental health because uh, I I tend to be very chill and positive about stuff. Um, so having having my audios on might be might be good for you. Um, <laughs> and maybe I'll get some money. Although. Probably not, because I've only made about 500 bucks from YouTube in the entire time that I've done it, but that's okay. Um, yeah, just, just having some sort of company is important, um, particularly if you live alone. But even if you don't, you know, some, sometimes we may feel lonely, uh, even if we're not alone, even if there are, in fact, people living with us or in the, the vicinity, we can still feel lonely. Um, and loneliness is, is not just about people, um, but it's also about having um, the motivation to do things and letting yourself do things. Because I think a lot of the time, we don't let ourselves do the kinds of things by ourselves that we would with someone else. So, you know, I, I, I don't let myself cook this thing unless someone else is coming over to enjoy it, or I, I you know, I don't... I don't ever like get up and dance unless someone else is dancing with me or I, I, you know, don't put the effort in to go out and do this thing or go for a walk or, or whatever, unless I'm doing it with this person or unless I have someone to do it with. So we may feel a sense of longing for a thing rather than a person, but we may displace that onto the person and think, well, that's, that's what I'm missing. I'm missing that person. But really, you may be missing the thing that that person enables you to do. So when you're feeling lonely, have a think about what is it that I'm really missing? What is it that I'm missing? And if it's a person, what do I do with that person? There might be a factor in what I'm missing right now. And can I do that thing by myself? And you may find that that makes you more lonely, and that's okay if that if that does. Um, but I think just giving yourself the opportunity to do things that you may not ordinarily do, or that you may not consider yourself to be able to or allowed to do, um, it's important. So give give yourself the opportunity to um, to do that, and um, yeah, you know, if if in doubt. Put on your old friend Ray, <laughs> or whoever else you like. If you if you want to listen to ASMR, if you want to listen to the podcast, the radio, or whatever, 
Um, maybe don't listen to the radio because there's a lot of coronavirus stuff going on right now, I imagine. And it's important to limit your media outtake, uh, sorry, um, intake so that you can um, not get so overwhelmed by all the stuff that's just going on and all the things that people are talking about. And the media in particular tend to be very uh, extreme about that. They tend to be a lot of like fear mongering and, and um, focusing on the worst case and trying to hype things up and get people to pay attention and watch things or click things or, or whatever. Um, so there's a lot of like sensationalist stuff and a lot of spin that isn't really accurate. So yeah, just um, put a limit on, on the sorts of things that you look at. I would say don't don't look at the news all the time. Don't have streams and feeds of it, and instead just um, you know, like an hour each day or whatever, you can you can spend some time catching up on stuff, and then go off and do something else. Do do stuff that isn't that. Um, you know, social social media is potentially really great if you're using it for social things, but if you're not and you're constantly being bombarded with bad news. Uh, that's going to negatively impact your your mental health, and it's probably going to make you want to ignore all of that and switch away from it, and then you may turn to isolating yourself, which is not good. So, uh, yeah, try not to do that. <laughs> basically, um, I I would say try and blacklist some things and not look at them unless you are sort of doing a dedicated news update thing. Um, in which case, just do it for a short period of time and then go off and do something else. Uh, that's my strategy and it tends to work pretty good. Um, yeah, so having having balance, having variety is, is really good. And um, being able to step back from the stuff that overwhelms you or drains you or makes you afraid or angry or whatever else. And... Um, just trying to give yourself the space and the opportunity to uh, to get what you need in a in a way that is sustainable and healthy, uh, in a way that works for you, and not just something that someone has told you to do. Except for me, listen to me, <laughs> or don't. It's up to you, I guess. But I've I've got your best interest in mind. I I I don't have an ulterior motive. I actually do want you to take care of yourself. Um, and if that means, you know, stepping back or doing whatever, then do it. Uh, also try not to use unhealthy coping mechanisms like, uh, drugs and alcohol and sex and gambling and, uh, things like that, <laughs> if possible. But, you know, have, have some understanding for yourself about that too, because, um, it's a, it's a, it's a tough time right now and everybody's having a, a tough time. Um, yeah. So, what are we going to do with this caravan? Um, I have colored in the little flaps, I guess, uh, along the, the front part, the roof, but I don't know what color I want the actual caravan to be. Um, maybe like a reddish pink or something? Um... What is, what's that? Mm, it's okay. Do you want like a brown? Maybe like a brown. Maybe like the cross between a reddish pink and a brown. What's that? Mm, it's kind of a beetroot color. I don't know about that one. Um, what about this? That's even more beetroot. <laughs> okay. Not that one. Um, what about this one? That one is very brown, but it looks kind of dirty and I don't like it very much. Um, that one, no, I don't really like that either. What about this one? That's purpley sort of, that's like a, uh, what is it, like a red cabbage or something? That's actually, it's kind of nice, but I don't think I want that for the whole caravan. Um, maybe you can be like a flower or something. Uh, what about like this one? Mm, yeah, that looks kind of nice. Okay, 
Um, yeah, and you know, if you um, if you have some people who are really just freaking out about stuff, and they're just overwhelming you, and they're just talking about stuff that is constant negativity or whatever, it's okay to take some time away from them, as I said, but, like, it's also okay to ask them to stop talking about that stuff with you, like, set some boundaries. Um, my mum is a bit that way, and sometimes I have to be like, you know what, mum, I don't necessarily want to talk about, like, funerals and the coronavirus and stuff, uh, when I've woken up. So, yeah, just, um, set boundaries and let people know, you know what, I'm okay to interact with you in these kinds of ways, but I'm not okay to interact with you in these kind of ways. And that's okay. You don't need to feel guilty about that. You're not doing the wrong thing. Um, you can just explain that you're having a hard time and you're trying to do what's best for you. And there are some things that are just a bit too much and that's okay. I, um, I, I tend to be okay with talking about stuff that is heavy, but it depends on how and when. Um, and certainly if you're already suffering from, you know, burnout or having some really hard times or struggling with stuff, you may not have the capacity, um, or, or it, it may be specific issues that are upsetting or triggering for you, or it may be stuff that is just too much at the end of a long day, or when you've just woken up, or you're, you're you know, you're crying over something in particular, you're having a hard time with a, a specific thing, um, it's okay to step back. It's okay to set limits and boundaries. It's okay to take time for yourself and give yourself space. That's actually a really healthy thing to do. So give yourself permission to do that. And you're, you're not doing anything wrong, but if you need some forgiveness, then give yourself that forgiveness. And I forgive you too. And I give you permission to do it. And I'm proud of you for doing it. Good rain cloud. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, I think just, just give yourself the opportunity to grieve for, for stuff that has lost um, meaning for you or, or stuff that you are not able to do, stuff that you've lost from your life, stuff that's changed in your life. Um, I did a, a grief ramble audio uh, already, so I'm not going to touch on that too much more, but if you have not heard that one, uh, maybe give it a listen. It's not as dark as it sounds. It's actually pretty nice, but just recognize that there is going to be grief when there is change and loss, and there's a lot of change and loss that's going on right now. Um, yeah, yeah, and what that grieving process looks like is going to be different for everyone and what you need and the things that you've lost and the things that are important to you may be very different from what other people are experiencing and that's okay too it's okay to to have uh, differences in the way that you process things in the way that you grieve things in the things that you love the things that you miss the things that you don't really care about or that, that haven't really impacted you that much that's okay um, just, just try and be aware of what it's like for you and to not make assumptions about what it's like for other people because they may have very different experiences of it and that's perfectly okay too. Um, I, I have not really experienced, um, the same sort of losses as many other people have, um, both in terms of lifestyle and like, you know, loved ones and stuff. Um, but I'm still trying to be very mindful of how it is impacted other people and, um, not make assumptions about what it's like and not belittle the things that they, uh, are struggling with or the things that they've missed that maybe I don't consider that important or, or aren't really a factor for me. Um, so just try and be respectful of, of what people are going through, you know? Um, hmm, what else do we want? Maybe like a little light blue up here. That's kind of nice. Um, yeah. And yeah, like escapism is healthy and important in moderation. 
um, to be able to space out what you're going through, to be able to give yourself a break from it. And there's some nice escapism on my channel as well. Um, but just make sure that you're not overindulging in escapism and that you are able to face reality and, and deal with reality when you need to. Um, I think you can just kind of intuitively find a balance. I think you'll, you'll, you'll probably be aware of if you're not doing um, what's best for you. And if that is the case, then just you know gently try and make some changes and, and acknowledge that and not judge yourself for it. Um, you, you don't need shame and, and guilt um, over that. It's possible to acknowledge that something isn't necessarily great for you, that something might not be a best decision, and just make some changes without beating yourself up over it. And um, as, as we said before, like self-acceptance and, and um, kindness and compassion is just so important. So try and try and do that try and be gentle with yourself because things are pretty pretty rough right now um and will probably be rough for a while too um it's gonna be a strange transition period and that's okay um it's gonna be interesting what this audio is like to people in like three years or something <laughs> i'll uh i'll be curious about that who knows Maybe if you're listening to this in uh, 2023, hit me up, let me know, leave a comment, if comments are still a thing. Um, yeah, maybe maybe we'll all just um, give each other toilet paper as a currency instead, who knows. Um, <laughs> but hopefully, uh, hopefully this, this remains relevant in the sense of like self-care and compassion and, and things like that and adjusting to um, changes you know I'm sure I'm sure there will be relevance uh, even then but hopefully uh, not not the coronavirus stuff specifically that hopefully that won't be relevant anymore and I don't really think that it will be I think this will be this will be over soon enough um, it may take a little while to really get the, um, uh, the the full solution going, but I think we'll, we'll bounce back. We'll be okay. There'll just be changes, and that's okay. Um, what color do I want for the wheel flower? There is a little flower on the wheel. Um, maybe I'll just make it green. That's an unconventional color for a flower. You don't tend to see green flowers very much. They tend to be the exception. <laughs> on an otherwise green thing, but I'm going to be a little bit playful. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, just, um, just try and take care of yourself and do what is best for you, whatever that looks like. It is okay if nobody else is doing that thing, or if people think that it's weird, as long as it feels good for you, it feels healthy and sustainable, and it helps you get by, uh, and it is not using some sort of addictive, abusive substance, then go for it. And, and as long as it's not hurting someone else. Um, yeah, I think you will be able to determine if that is good or not. Um, okay, so I made like a little, I don't know, like a pot plant out of the wheel. <laughs> it's kind of nice, sure. Um, then what are we going to do with this caravan? What is the caravan going to be? We've got like Starfleet mustard. How's that going to look? No, I don't like that at all. Let's not do that. Um, what about like a gray? There's like this kind of a... Hmm, it's like a bluish gray. It's quite gray, but it's not like a lead pencil gray, but it's kind of gray, but I don't know. We'll, we'll give that a go. Um, how are we going to color this in? Like, diagonal? Pretty sneaky, sis. Um, yeah. It doesn't look fantastic, but it, maybe it'll be better when it's all done. 
Um, and if not, that's fine. I am just kind of doing this for funsies and because I thought it would be a nice way to just sort of rejuvenate myself. And um, you know what? It actually is. It's quite nice. Just doing some like soft strokes with the pencil, hopefully not putting too much pressure on it, although some bits are a bit darker than others, but that's okay. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect. It can just be. And I think that that kind of approach is good to try and get into the mindset of. Um, I used to be much, much worse about perfectionism. I'm, I'm better at it. I'm not perfect, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's tough to get over that kind of inner critic, wanting you to be perfect, not wanting to put yourself in the, um, in the space where you can potentially be criticized by others. I get that, but you know, that kind of, um, protective attitude is the kind of thing that stops you from experiencing intimacy. Um, and that stops you from trying things and, and exploring and experiencing the world and you know, being able to play, um, being able to enjoy life. It's a really difficult thing to be in that kind of mindset. So I would, I would strongly suggest trying to overcome that perfectionism if possible. I found that a very challenging thing to do, but a thing that I did with the aid of a therapist. Um, and you can do that too. If, uh, if, if that is something you struggle with, you can certainly overcome it and, um, confront that very unpleasant voice, uh, that is in your head telling you all sorts of nasty things. Um, okay. There's a little bit more that we've got to do on this side of the door, and then I think I might make the, the door green. I think that might be nice. Um, or, or blue. Maybe, maybe blue. I don't know. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so I've made this caravan like a gray kind of drop. Um, you know what? I'm thinking possibly. Uh, possibly blue might look nice. I was, I was going to save that for the um, actual clouds, but you know what? It's fine. It could be like a cloud themed caravan underneath some actual clouds. Hmm. It's looking nice. I've taken a more loose approach for the caravan because it's a lot bigger. Um, but it does look quite nice, actually. Uh, and if you are coloring in this picture, or, you know, anything else, uh, feel free to share it in the, uh, in the comments if you'd like. It's, uh, it's nice to see people doing a different take on uh, pictures and how, how they have uh, done something different to me. I think, I think that's nice. What are we going to do with the door, uh, the open part of the door? That is a good question. I think we might put like just a, a sort of orangey yellow glow. It's not, it's not really at night because the sun is up, but like, I don't know. It can be exuding a, a golden glow. Um, maybe it's a caravan into heaven, you know? Maybe heaven is a caravan. Who knows? Um... Yeah, it's, it's an odd choice, but it, it's kind of cool, I guess. Uh, okay. 
okay. And then we'll do the same thing with the window. clouds do we want to do like regular clouds like like realistic clouds I don't know um, why not both we could do both uh, I want like a blue maybe it's probably gonna be a lot of purple in this picture but that's okay because I like purple um, incidentally uh, if you like coloring in and you want some coloring in books, um, Thania McArdle, the person who made this, has some great ones. Uh, I have seen her stuff on her website and it's great. And if you are looking for some stuff, uh, she's got some free pages. I think I've done <laughs> like half of them. Um, but yeah, if you, if you want to get some uh, books, digital or physical, uh, she's got a whole bunch and they look really nice. So uh, feel free to uh, go support her and buy some things. Uh, this is not at all a paid advertisement. It is kind of the opposite, I guess, in the sense that I have used her stuff for free and have not given her anything. So here's a little shout out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, she's she's got some good stuff. And I think her, her approach and her attitude and her philosophy to art and uh, creativity and wanting to give people some some free stuff it's really nice so there you go um okay so i've made some funky fresh little like waves inside a cloud or something i don't really know uh and then i think we might do a little bit of purple in this cloud as well i'm not quite sure what what purple i want to do um What's a nice purple? How about this one? Um, no, that's like too pinky. Um, what about this? Um, it's a bit like broken up, also, it's quite blue. Um, what's this one like? That's quite blue as well, actually. Um, is that brown? Yeah, it is. What about this one? How's this? Mm, yeah, that's quite nice. Okay, let's do that one. Okay. That is, that is actually quite nice. I like that combination of, um, like, aqua, cyan, whatever, and, um, like a purpley blue. It looks quite, quite good. Uh, do we want, like, a little bit of, like, a sea green or something, uh, as well, in the little dots? What's that look like? Uh, what about this one? Oh, that's nice. Let's use that one. Okay. Uh, do these work like that? Yeah, that's okay, I guess. And like that. Like that. Like that. Okay. And then... Um, put a little yellow, because there's like a flower in the cloud. Uh, that looks nice. And then what color's the flower going to be? Ooh, that's a question, isn't it? Um, we haven't 
hand on like a whole lot of red. Do we want a red flower? Maybe. What's that? Is that like a red? Um, it's kind of a pinky beetroot. I guess that's fine. Mm, it looks a little strange, but it's okay. Okay, and then what do we want for the inside part? Maybe just a just a different red. Yeah, well, let's do this one. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm surprised that I don't have better reds, really, considering that red is a pretty popular color. But most of my reds seem a bit on the pale side, perhaps. Um, but that's okay. Kind of looks like a little slice of tomato, but that's fine. Um, what are we doing? Purple. Okay, let's finish off that purple part of the cloud. It's quite a big one, so it may take a little while, but that's okay. Um, I'm just going to fill in the like nooks and crannies, particularly the crannies. Um, but you can't forget about the nooks as well. They are valid. Uh, okay. And in here. And then I am um, I've been doing a bit more colouring lately. It's it's kind of nice. I'm still I'm not great at it, but that's okay, because I don't need to be great at it uh, to enjoy it. But it is kind of nice doing something with my hands and just being able to kind of ramble about stuff. Um, it's, it's quite a different kind of atmosphere, a more relaxed, contemplative one than the kinds of audios I make where I'm specifically sort of focusing on a topic and trying to ramble about it, often with the intent to educate or, or whatever. Um, I, I like those audios. I think they're, they're great audios, but um, not everyone is, is about them um, necessarily. And I think that having the more sort of relaxed um, approach can be really nice too, because not everyone is necessarily in like that kind of a learning <laughs> headspace, the headspace where they want to like have a, a lecture or, or whatever, have like an impassioned um, audio that focuses on a subject and, and info dumps and stuff. This is more sort of casual, I suppose, um, perhaps a bit more accessible, longer, admittedly, less, less focused, which some people may not care for, but yeah, I think it's, that's nice to have the variety. Um, much in the same way that you need variety in, in the self-care that you have. I think people probably appreciate the variety in, in audios. Um, lots of different kinds, lots of different feelings, lots of different um, focuses and purposes. Uh, it's, it's good. It's good to have. Uh, and even if something is not necessarily what you're in for at the moment or not necessarily what you need right now or you don't have the um the proper sort of headspace to tackle a particular subject um hopefully you'll remember that it's there and maybe stumble upon it um some other time um so i mean it 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 might be a good idea for you to look back at some of the older audios that I've made that you might have missed or you may not have listened to um, when they first came out or you, you may have said, oh, I'll listen to that one later and never did. Because uh, there's some there's some good stuff in there, <laughs> if I do say so myself. <laughs> there's some good topics that uh, I think a lot of people need to, uh, to listen to but perhaps haven't. And um, yeah. And, and some stuff that you may have forgotten about, but like you, you listened to it a while back and found it helpful, or, or maybe it wasn't helpful at the time, but will be now, or who knows. But uh, yeah, feel free to 
have a listen to my older audios and, and see what uh, what grabs you. There's some, some good stuff there. I'm quite liking this cloud, actually. It's like a little... Um, it's not it's not a storm cloud it's like a storm in a cloud <laughs> in a sense there's like a a sort of um purpley blue stormy nighttime sky with like bright waves and and stuff it's it's kind of nice i like this uh it's it's funky okay i kind of like the idea of a of a scene being in a cloud like you've got little little worlds inside your your clouds that's nice um, whoops i colored very much outside the lines <laughs> oh well that's fine uh maybe i can like neaten it up and have it be like an outline <laughs> there we go <laughs> maybe that works <laughs> Okay. It kind of works. It doesn't really, but it kind of works. Okay. Mm, sure. And then do we outline the bottom part with the the light blue? Maybe. <laughs> it's kind of a mess now. Okay. Um Mm, it kind of works, I suppose. Okay. We sort of saved it. Look at that. Um, now, what are we going to do? I've done a lot of rainbow colored things. I don't know if we need more rainbows. Maybe. to do. Um, mm, let's go with like this yellow, maybe. Yeah, that's actually quite nice, that little yellow. Okay, then like an orange, I suppose. And then we need a red. Um, how do we feel about this one? That's quite a nice red, actually. I said we hadn't really had good reds, but that's actually like a pretty good red. Uh, cool. And then, what do we want? Like a pink, maybe? Uh, sure, we'll go with like this one. Yeah, okay, that's cool. And then, um, hmm, what are we going to do for this cloud? It's going to be different? Maybe. 
And we also got like a little flower thing up the top and one down below. Um, <laughs> Let's go with a blue. Um, what's a good blue? Like this one we haven't used. Let's go with this blue. And we'll make like a little sea swirl in this, uh, this cloud. We've got like little ocean waves in them or something, uh, which is kind of nice. And then what are we going to do for the sky? I don't know. Um, possibly a, like a sky blue, or possibly something different. Um, maybe like a like a red sky or something. Okay. Uh, yeah. So what's good? I never like keep these in a pile, so I never know what what one's which. Um. Mm, yeah, okay, let's use this one. It's kind of a pinkish, pinkish red. It's sort of nice. Um, it's not really like staining the paper, marking the paper in the right, the right way. It's a bit light, but it's fine. We'll make two. It can be a, a lighter sky, perhaps. Um, Yeah, I've enjoyed um, doing some more colouring, and I haven't done it so long, um, but it's it's nice to do. And I think that I might um I might have some colouring in for my clients uh, if they if they want it. Like obviously not everyone is going to be colouring in every session, but it it might be a good icebreaker, a good way for them to um, kind of distract themselves so that they can talk more openly. Uh, or a way for them to express their feelings and stuff as well. Uh, some symbol work or something might be nice. Might be good. Uh, or have it in the waiting room or something. I don't know. Mm, okay. Kind of colored a little bit of this too hard and then the rest isn't like <laughs> it's not taking the pencil hard enough or, or something i don't know um i don't know if it's a problem with the page or, or what uh i mean i think it's a problem with the pencil but i don't know why particular bits aren't working so well but oh well Okay, that's that's good enough. Um, I've accidentally covered outside the lines again, so we're just going to do what we did and do like a little outline, and it's fine. That's just what clouds are like in this this world, apparently. Um, so color that in like that, and then we need uh, was it this pencil? I think. Uh, can just come out a little bit on the other side like that. Sure. And cool. Okay. And then we have a tiny little flower thing in the sky. I don't really know what it is. Maybe it's a flower. Maybe it's not. Uh, what do we want that to be like? Maybe a, maybe an orange. Um, that'll be good. Hmm. 
Okay. And then there's just one more little flower down the bottom. And I don't know what color to make that one. Um, <laughs> what's, what's missing? What's lacking in this picture? Do we want some pink, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking pink. Pink might be nice. Let's go with like this one. And... Be like a nice little pink carnation or something. Um, okay. And then uh, for the outline, what do we want? Like, how's that pink? Is that good? Is that a good pink? Maybe. Uh, slightly different pink for the outside, just to differentiate it. And I'm uh, not sure how I feel about that, but it's fine. Uh, and then we've got like, there's actually like a tiny little flower inside the flower somehow. Um, your dog, I heard you like flowers, so I put flowers in your flowers so you can flower your flower. Sure. It's an old meme, but it checks out. Um, and then there is like a little rim around the, the um, what should we call it, the caravan as well. So we might color that in with something as well. I don't know what. Um, do we just put more pink in the in the pink? Sure. Do like that. And then uh yellow. Kind of like a slightly different yellow in there, maybe. Okay. And then what else do we want? Uh are you are you pink? You're kind of pink. Sure, I'll we'll just have all the pinks in this one flower. Um, okay, and then the edge of this caravan, what do we want that to be? Um, blue? Maybe? Uh, maybe not. Uh, gold? Do you want to just make it like the same gray but darker? Or like the sky blue? Um, it could be brown, but the wheel's already brown, so maybe not brown. Uh, what about like a. Hmm, yeah, maybe we'll just use the gray, because the gray didn't really come out that much in the actual thing. This will look different. Yeah, I mean, it, it does basically just look like a lead pencil, but that's fine. Um, okay. Um, this little last bit of the caravan and I think also the window has like a little rim that we might want to color in with like blue probably to match the door maybe that'll make sense um, okay and then yeah what was it this blue I think so 
Uh, make that nice and nice and firm. Uh, and then there's like a little bit around the rim of the door window as well. Um, Okay, and then I'm just coloring like the door handle of silver. Sure. Okay, I think that looks quite nice actually. Um, I am pretty happy with that. I will take a picture of it and show you uh, probably now <laughs> in the video. Uh, just gonna color in one last little bit actually. I forgot the yellow of flower. Okay, there we go. Lovely. I think that looks really nice. I'm I'm proud of that. <laughs> this was fun. Mm. Thank you for joining me, my little rain clouds. I hope you had a good time too. And I hope that you'll take care of yourself. And I hope that I will take care of myself too. <laughs> I will try. Yeah. Mm. Okay, my little rain clouds. Until next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.